question for anyone that speaks Hebrew, like the original Hebrew, not modern Hebrew or Yiddish. What can I do for you? And also for those who are interested, here's today's Spider-Man fit. For the last couple of days, people have been using the word unrighteous in my comments. And I decided to do a study on the word righteous and righteousness. And I understand that the word righteous came from a old English word, right wise, which means right way or right wise, right? And then it changed uh, around Middle English to right wise, and it still meant the same thing, right way or wise person. Now, it did not mean moral conduct until early um, Middle English. So even this old English word is still very much in the same neighborhood as our modern concept of righteousness. The idea of wise here does not mean intelligent. It has to do with a way or a manner. And right here has a moral and a religious dimension. This has to do with upright, just, in conformity with divine law or moral correctness. And so uh, right wise means you are going about things in a manner that is correct, that is upright, that is in conformity with divine law. There is both a moral and a religious dimension to the way this concept of right wise was used. But what I need to know is how did this word get in the Old Testament? Like, I know that there is the Hebrew equivalent, but I cannot find what the actual definition means because every time I try to um, take the Hebrew equivalent of righteous, like it just says righteous. So two things to note here. The first is that when you look up uh, a biblical Hebrew word in a lexicon or a dictionary, you're usually not going to get a definition or an explanation of the semantic sense. You're going to get what's called a gloss. And that's just what modern word most closely approximates what the ancient word was used to refer to. And so this is helpful for translating, uh, but it's not helpful for understanding the contours and the extent and the boundaries of a concept. And this brings up the second thing. Words don't have meaning. They're just signs, and they just signify or point to conceptual packages. And these conceptual packages differ from time to time, place to place, and from person to person. And so you understand the conceptual package to the degree that you have experience with usage of that word, and you have knowledge of the agreements about what conceptual packages will be indicated by what words. And so one way this works is uh, I grew up using the words coat and jacket as synonyms. They referred to the exact same thing. My wife grew up understanding a jacket to be something larger and heavier than a coat. And so she would say the jacket and I would grab something and she'd say, no, that's a coat. I had no experience with that usage. I had no knowledge of that agreement about what conceptual package was tied to the use of what word. And this is where things get really complicated for trying to understand ancient languages because we don't have living informants to tell us, no you fool, that refers to this. We have to try to suss it out ourselves from the context. We also don't have, for at least biblical Hebrew, uh, people saying this means precisely this, and here are all the details about that. We get that with like Greek and Latin in later periods, but we don't have that for ancient Hebrew. And so we have to look back and try to figure out, based on the way the words are used in their contexts, what all of the contours and extent of those conceptual packages might have been. And it is further complicated by the fact that the Hebrew Bible covers almost a thousand years of usage. And in a thousand years, the meanings of words change significantly. So it's phenomenally complex. But probably the best resource we have for trying to understand all the contours and extent of the conceptual packages that are signified by given words is a text called the Theological Dictionary of the Old Testament. Sadeka, and I know I'm not saying that right, is righteousness, and then Sadike is righteous. But how, if it is an old English word that did not um, exist until around circa 450, 800? What I'm looking for is what word were the ancient uh, Hebrews uh, meaning when they wrote that? 
Now this is a 15 volume set of books. It is expensive, it is difficult to access. This is volume 12, which is where we're going to find the relevant term. Now I'm not gonna share the entire entry here, but this is the first page for this group of words. Uh, the verbal root is tzadak, and then we have adjectives and nouns, tzedek, tzedakah, and tzadik. Now, toward the bottom of this page, you'll see the number two and then meaning. And I'm gonna share the two main senses here, and then you're gonna to have to pause to read the rest of the discussion on meaning. It says here, scholarly debate has generally focused on two different understandings of the OT notion of righteousness and justice. One view construes the notion of tzedek legally and understands righteousness as concurrence with a standard or norm. Whoever watches over righteousness and justice, ultimately God, also distributes reward and punishment according to whether the righteousness in question corresponds to that norm. Antitheses include terms such as mercy, compassion, and salvation. In other words, mercy, compassion, and salvation is when you do good things to folks even though they are not in accordance with those established norms. Other scholars understand the notion of tzedek as virtually synonymous with deliverance and salvation, describing it as a relation with God rather than as related to a norm established by God. And then you can pause to read the rest of the pages. Now I'm skipping several pages on related terms to get to the distinction between tzedek and tzedakah, and then to the discussion on tzedek. Now, does the conceptual package that is evoked for us today when we hear the word righteous or righteousness exactly match the conceptual packages that were evoked anciently? Of course not. There are a lot of differences, but it's the best word that is available to us. And the alternative is to try to explain all of this. And that's just not a possibility in a translation. You can have all kinds of explanatory notes, or you can have the theological dictionary of the Old Testament, but you can't fit all of that into just a straightforward translation. So this is one of the challenges of translation and of understanding ancient texts. They had very different conceptual frameworks or suites or packages that were evoked by the words that they use, and we try to get as close as we can with these glosses, with these translations, but it's never a one-to-one -one correspondence, and this is one of the dangers of assuming that just by reading a translation, we are grasping the full context and everything that is being communicated in between the lines.